All right, guys, it's time once again for the Bizarre Briefing. This is the what? August 25th. What? Isn't it September, though? September. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's September, the September 2015 edition. Uh, I'm Bryce Castillo, joined with Brant Hughes. Hi. And John Tilton. Yo. And this is the show where uh, we talk about uh, the, the things that are going on behind the scenes uh, behind the scenes of the behind the scenes that we are already like, like the curtain is already pulled back so much on everything that uh, this, the, I, I don't know this, this this supplementary podcast maybe relative to other sort of genres uh, is not very impressive. Don't listen. This is a bad show. This is what I'm saying is that this is a worse. Who let who worse. decided to let Bryce God Bryce damn. host this this thing? Oh <laughs> the Bizarre Briefing is the top downloaded podcast on iTunes this week, and yep. it's the best, That's a fact. the best possible, uh, <laughs> the best. Keep going. Keep Sorry, going. when you said you this it. is a fact, uh, it reminded me of. Um, I was really tired last night, and I fr- I forget the conversation, but uh, Kelsey was trying to prove something to me, and I, I just said. I was trying to make a point, and then I said something like, it's not science, it's just fact. <laughs> and, and she thought it was the funniest thing ever. And it wasn't until I woke up the next day, I was like, that was kind of a funny... Uh, <laughs> I was like, I, I should use this expression more often. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good one. Anyway. It's a keeper. Yeah. Uh, Waffleophagus also has a point that this is also just like a very... This is just a streamed company meeting at some point. Yeah, I mean, this is, is the only way we can actually get a company meeting. So. Especially because of the last... The last month's episode was where we learned so much. A, uh, yeah. A, well, so one of the big things was that we learned that uh, the warehouse is was getting signed the, the very next day. You've been in uh, about three weeks or so, right? John? Yeah, man, it doesn't feel like that. Uh, it still feels super recent because I think we're still um, we're still moving everything in. It takes some time to do that, mm-hmm. um, but uh, we're definitely utilizing it in a lot of ways already, which is cool. Are you um, finding the extra space to actually to be helpful and to be out of the garage? So right now I'm finding that it's mostly just flat out it's necessary because mm. uh, like there's a particularly large product coming out later in the year that uh, there it's just no physical room in Brian's house or uh, garage to store it. It's an elephant. And <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're selling elephants this holiday. Yeah. The scam school elephant. We think it's going to be real big. But, but uh, <laughs> anyway, so uh, like I don't know if either of you have been over there since that got delivered. But like if you go in, it takes up most of the garage space right now. Mm. So it's a uh, it's a uh, pretty cool to see how things like that wouldn't be possible uh, with without the new location. So I think uh, going into the future, it'll be neat to see uh, what it allows us to do. So I'm excited for that. Uh, it's kind of funny so far because it's we're still kind of in between. Stuff's still at Brian's, stuff's at the new place. So now it's kind of some driving back and forth. So mm-hmm. there's some dip in efficiencies that way, but overall it's uh And it really is well. like a couple of minutes down the road. Yeah, that's uh, close. Distance wise. So, you know, that's maybe not the worst. But yeah, I, I was there about a week or so after it opened. Uh, and. Uh, it's definitely like there's a lot of great space which will help with a lot of the assembly stuff that otherwise would have had to be in the, the non air conditioned uh, garage. Yeah, that's huge too, and that's something that uh, you you uh, kind of forget about it until like there was something I needed to do in the garage here mm-hmm. uh, after we had moved in, and it was like, oh, I can't even breathe in here. Wow. Versus the. Uh, the new space where it's it's pretty comfortable to run through all that stuff. So, so that's awesome. When yeah. I was there a few weeks ago, I I uh, picked up a couple of boxes because I was moving, which we can talk about later. Um, and you informed me about the little infestation. Oh yeah, I Brian. If Brian's spying on us through the live stream, <laughs> he doesn't know about this yet. I don't think, but uh, it actually seems to have. Uh, it was kind of like a now. seasonal thing. Well, yeah, I don't know if it was the weather was right for a certain amount of time or if it was uh, that we had open boxes but we had a bunch of crickets there like right after we moved in mm-hmm. so I actually don't know it, they're they're pretty much I think there's like 
maybe like one or two still in there that you kind of hear, but I pretty much just kill them now when I see them. Mm. And I think that helped. But, um, and there was kind of some uh, wetness and weird weather that I think attracted a lot. Mm. And I also started closing up all of our cardboard boxes. But um, yeah. but look, all the product is uh, is good. Safe, so you don't yeah. have to worry about no bug juice. Infested, good save. Uh, good save. <laughs> bug juice <laughs> products. Uh, they were mostly just mm. in empty boxes. Uh, so I, I took those boxes home, and there was definitely a cricket in one of them that made it inside the old apartment. I, I would have guessed that that happened. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, it's great, and it's glad. I'm glad to hear that. Like it's it is working out as a new space for you. Um, yeah, it's because going you well. spend it, like you spend a lot of your time assembling stuff there, right? Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's weird because yeah, I guess I did this weekend a little bit too. We actually have um, uh, Ash has been helping out a little bit with some assembly things, so. Uh, Assembly is definitely happening there. Uh, it's it's not as much. Um, I've still done a lot, but uh, it's nice because it actually allows us to bring in other people comfortably to uh, help out, and especially as we go into the uh, busy time of year with the holidays coming up. Yeah. Um, it'll it'll help us just be able to scale to that that extra business that happens that time of year. Yeah. Cool. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool yeah. indeed. Ooh, ooh! It is weird right now. We we don't currently have internet there because it is a commercial property which requires commercial internet rates. Oh, so it's actually cheaper to uh, uh, tether, you know, a cell phone mm-hmm. to get. We we usually don't need a whole lot of internet over there, and so we're kind of seeing how that goes. But right now it's a little funky because. Um, I don't know. It's it's not the ideal internet situation, but right because you get orders and and print stickers and stuff, right? Right. Yeah, and it's it's all low data, and I've just tethered my phone so far, and it, you know, it's working well. Yeah. But uh, at some it's point, it's slightly inconvenient. But I, when you look at the price of what internet costs at a commercial place, yeah. it's like, oh man, it's not that inconvenient. Like, mm. come on, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which. Uh, well, yeah, and they definitely take advantages of because yeah. most companies would need stuff like that. So, yeah. have you gotten like a microwave or like a little fridge in there yet? No, I need it. We have a little fridge in there, okay. uh, but we need to pick up a microwave at some point. Um, yeah. Get a coffee machine, pool table. Yeah, <laughs> really, just live it up. Yeah, uh, uh, a very two point web two point oh company. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we'll all put up. We're getting shelves in tomorrow, so. Oh, that's right. That that's an uh, right now. It's we haven't moved everything over yet because we're we were waiting on those and finally Sorry. everything went through and so. Mm. Yeah, be, that's it's good. a process. There wasn't. There's not a lot of like vertical storage space, uh, where there is now. It's if there most everything was on the ground last time I checked or like yeah uh, you you know what I mean not like. Yeah. Just fucking piles of shit, but like. But I'm sure if you ask me next month, uh, I'll I'll still act like we're totally still moving in because mm-hmm. we'll just be at a different phase of that. But if I was able to, this is getting complicated now. But if I was able to, in the future, time travel back to now and see like what it was like now, I'd be like, mm-hmm. wow, we made so much progress. Yeah, but if uh, only I bet if you was, like, recording me, this moment for posterity. Yeah, but <laughs> if you ask me a month from now if we're moved in yet, I'll be like, oh, we're really far from being fully moved in. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anyone could follow that, but are you guys gonna move the main cabinet over there so we could have our our wind jammers tournaments? <gasps> The the which cabinet the arcade the cabinet? arcade cabinets I don't know if he, I, yeah. I I don't know if you would be able to convince Brian to move those but maybe maybe at least one of them right yeah wait are there two well they uh, well one of them's an actual game right one of them's like the Tron game I think oh right I, maybe I'm wrong I think I wrong they might this? both be main cabinets but I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure I can't remember now either but yeah there are two oh wow okay like people there's five they're, they're right next to each other <laughs> there's one right behind you <laughs> <laughs> uh cool well that's a, a great pup date uh hope hope to hear more about that in the future yeah, yeah. uh progress progress uh last month we talked about 
um, Dragon Con uh, coming up and Texas Association mm-hmm. of Magicians coming up. Yeah. Um, were there any good stories from TAOM? Like we all ended up there and like, <laughs> and we had we had we had to con our way in there to shoot the That's thing. That's right. Because Brian didn't tell anybody, and yeah. we definitely so didn't like, have like badges or anything. The magicians, yeah. Yeah, we're like, um, no, Brian. Like we came here with all this stuff. Brian yeah. said we can shoot this, and mm-hmm. he was like, just go in. But you know what's great is that like. Uh, didn't somebody uh, did did Kelsey get in like behind I was us? just gonna say that, Someone but then did. I didn't know if it was too off topic because then Kelsey also was trying to get in. Yeah, we scammed so well, we got a fourth person in. <laughs> yeah, well, and uh, yeah, because they were also she told me that too. They were also said something, and she's like, "Well, I'm with the magicians," and then they mm-hmm. let her in. Yeah, and it was a uh, hot tip. Yeah. Hot tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. box. I don't want to endorse this, but because uh, legitimately, everyone who who went in was. For free was actually part of the thing, right? Yeah, but um, but yeah, but I'm not you, saying it wouldn't you know. work if you walked into an uh, event like that and just said you yeah. were with X people. It does not work at E3. I can tell you that. <laughs> I'm sure because uh, I know that I I was legitimately needing to go somewhere for E3. When the first year I worked for Brian, we went to E3. Oh right, and uh, man nothing works there yeah Every, but that's because they have a huge issue with people trying to do yeah. stuff like that but um i had to do a little bit of that at dragon con or i well i ended up inadvertently doing some of that at dragon con but i also had to do some of it uh later i you know i my first day there if you were watch, i i was periscoping uh my walk from the hotel to go get my badge because you know i just gotten there and uh, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of sights, a lot of people to see. Sure. Uh, and it ended up being like an hour and a half, maybe two hours of me visiting the three main hotels, sneaking in and accidentally, like, accidentally getting into, like, badge holder areas and, like, being told to leave because I don't have a badge and mm-hmm. being sent in every which direction. Yeah. Uh, uh, until I, I found rem- out, I remember that crap. Going, <laughs> that was the worst. The first day of Dragon, uh, the, not the first day. The first mm-hmm. hour of Dragon Con is always the worst. And then once you get the badge, it's great. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I uh, w- w- hold on. So, I, so I, I ended up at information, and she was like, "Oh yeah, you need to go to a different hotel three blocks away. That's not even one of these main ones." Oh yeah. Uh, and then the you know the line goes down the block and around the corner and then doubles back and so there's it and then everyone insane. tells you something different and yeah yeah it was that was pretty that was always pretty miserable um but also it was like uh, a friday afternoon so it wasn't like the first day huge total lines that it could have been but uh yeah and then bunny has a, had a funny story about getting uh mistreated a little bit at the VIP table for badges. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but we talked about that on, on not attack this week, which we can talk about later. Um, Brent, were you there the year that we ran through all the exit doors? I don't think so. Ran- it doesn't sound <laughs> it was, There was this year. It was awesome. I, I can't remember. We, I, I know Chad was there, uh, but we were, we needed to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. And, there was an exit door with a big like alarm will sound if you go through there and we knew that if we didn't use that we would have to go like much further right and you know it's packed there's all these people there and we had stuff to move we were like carting like t-shirts or something Mm -hmm. and um so it was like well we don't want to go through this whole crowd with all these t-shirts and stuff so let's just barge through you know chad was convinced that the alarm would not go off uh, because there's so many people there, right? So they turn off alarms and stuff like that. Apparently, he knows this as a trick huh. of the trade. Okay. So we go through the first, you know, set of doors, and no alarm goes off. Great. But then there's a second set of doors, and it's like, okay. So we go through that one. Still no alarm goes off. So there's like five sets of doors, right? And they keep they all say that it will set a, off an alarm. So uh, we ended up just, like, running through all these doors, hoping that, like, the last one this one would also not go <laughs> off and we made it through without any alarms but uh wow. it was like very the um it was right i think it was a, 
early on when I started working with Brian. So my brain was very wired to be like, we can't go through the not ex- after you right. work for Brian for more than like a year or so. The a the sign, rules don't matter. A sign that says <laughs> alarm will go off if you go through this door doesn't mean anything. To, doesn't mean the same thing it used to. Hmm. Uh, but that also might just be a growing older thing too. But um, yeah. anyway, wiser. I I, I th- for some reason I thought Brant was there too. But I I know Chad was. I remember there but, being some kind of thing like that. But I, I I think I think that happened like when when we were like eating or something, and then we well because I feel like I, I thought Rob Kreckle and. Kelsey were both there too, which would mean it was two years ago. Which is when I was there. So you would have been there too, but maybe you're doing something else. Who knows? Yeah. I don't, I know. don't know. Parts of that sound vaguely familiar, so I might have been there and just we don't probably told very well. you about it. Yeah. yeah. Or you were just totally okay with. See, for me, I was like, I can't go through the. <laughs> right. I can't go through the exit door. No. Or the do not exit door. But yeah, those yeah. those that was your 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 first big experience at Dragon Con. You had, yeah, you kind of gotten a taste of things with with Nerdtacular and yeah, it was definitely uh, it was definitely like felt higher stakes for me, and I I was running around constantly uh, uh, to the point of uh, we uh, at the first on the end of the first night, I was hanging out with with some some chat people uh, in like the lobby of their hotel. <laughs> and I was so zonked that I, I went and sat on a couch and thought I was just resting my eyes for about five minutes or so. And apparently I was asleep for an hour and a half. Nice. <laughs> in this hotel lobby. Party hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think like mech ba- had like balanced a Barbie on my shoulder <laughs> while I'm like, hunched over like with my phone out and my like finger on my <laughs> phone so it wouldn't go to sleep for like an hour for an hour and a half which uh uh was disorienting hmm. um and then i i dragged my ass back to the hotel and got some sleep um, yeah, i saw a photo of that yeah, it's, yeah there are a lot all of those photos are very unflattering to my figure i'll just say that <laughs> um <laughs> uh but you know, it, there were a lot of people who who really uh, helped out a lot, uh, which uh, th- yes, Mech is giving me the the st- the picture here. Yes, very, classic, very ugly. Never forget. God damn it! Uh, uh, there are a lot of people who who like helped uh, a lot, and uh, uh, I, I I don't know. It, it 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 was really nice because like they totally didn't need to do that at all, um, but like. With with people helping like trek stuff back and forth from the hotel, or having us get uh, an Uber or whatever to do the exact same thing, or uh, whatever it was, uh, you know, uh, everybody really pitched in and and uh, made it uh, made it made it made it possible to make it easy on Brian because Brian was also like sleep deprived the whole time because hmm. uh, he couldn't uh, get any sleep. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was right. And then I lost my badge. I, I kind of I, I I like keeping badges from cons and stuff, just because right. like I'm like eventually going to be a hoarder and not want to forget things. Um, and so like Brian was just like one step ahead of you. What? I said I'm one step ahead of you. <laughs> Got all my yeah, badges. You, still. you need a you need a scrapbook for them. I do. Uh, yeah, because I have all sorts of goodies and things that I have nowhere to to put them. Um, man. The other thing is, if you just throw it out, mm-hmm. it'll hurt for like a day, mm. and then you'll be fine. Yeah. <sighs> but uh, I can already, I don't know. I, I would rather like. Here's what you do. I'd Th- rather get like a shadow box. Take a picture of it, uh-huh. then throw it out. So that way, if you're like, oh, but remember no, this thing? Then you're like, no, no, no. Hey, yeah, that, no that's, that's like a look half it. solution. Look at that's not. Like, you can see it. The there picture, it is. The picture will is. make you feel like you wish you had it still, though. Yeah. And then if I lose the picture, then I'm like, oh, man, what the fuck, Brant? This is my digital future. What happened? How did you lose it? <laughs> shit gets deleted. I don't know. Back that shit up, dog. <laughs> Carbonite. <laughs> oh. Just get an, get, get an external drive. You should be backing up everything all the time. I, everybody, yeah, everybody out there, back up your <laughs> stuff. This is our sponsor. This is back it up break. right now. Yeah, I'm really behind on my backups, guys. Yeah, I've oh been really God. concerned about it. 
Uh, no, I am like way behind on a bunch of stuff too. Um, like I haven't done any of like the music logging for Scam School in like two you months. You should do that. I know, cause we, cause it's already the new season, and I'm sure they're like, hey, can you do this fucking and thing? And also, it's like it's like the the further you get along, then you have to like go dig in the old files and you have to be like, what? Where is? This I'm not worried about that. <laughs> I'm not worried about that so much, but I just like need to do it. Like, so I moved. I got I got moved into my new place uh, last week. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, and I'm just like, I feel bad because I'm like trying to just decompress and like not just like, like, uh, yeah, I'm just like decompressing. I'm just like trying to not be, I'm trying to recover. I'm in the wake of, of having moved. Um, but uh, it has put me further behind than I would like on some of the stuff that I should have been working on. Hmm. Um, and I don't know, did you like, did you have any of that when you were, were moving, uh, your apartments where you were just like, I need to not be doing something right now. Like three days in, I was like, I'm refreshed. I got, I got like, I can fucking move around. I, I get, I get, I could, I could do anything. Sure. And then, so that was just, I mean, the, I mean, it, it was, it was a little tough in that I didn't have a desk. So like everything was kind of weird and makeshift for yeah. a long time. Uh, which really uh, killed a lot of my productivity, but I, I felt like I had recovered so much free time because I spent, you know, like when I was here, I spent a lot of time, you know, dedicated to being out of the way and oh, right. uh, to to dealing with people and dealing with work. Like I, mm -hmm. it was weird because when I was here, I was like, I'm here, so I need to be working because I'm at work. <laughs> And oh, so there was like no free time. There's no downtime or anything. Oh, interesting. Um, that's that's interesting because like when I started the moving process, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be dark for the next four days, everybody. So mm -hmm. don't ask me for anything. Um, which I guess was like the exact opposite of what you had, where you were here in the brushwoods for a little while and mm -hmm. totally capable of of getting stuff done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Brant, can you do this? No, I'm busy. We see you sleeping. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're just lying there. <laughs> um, oh, I got a new desk, by the way. Uh, yeah, you, you mentioned this to me previously. Uh, yeah, I ended up getting Fancy. the IKEA Alex desk. Hmm. Um, and I kind of like am feeling what you were... I asked you about your desk, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm kind of feeling what you were talking about, about not having... like not feeling like there's enough space on it. Okay. Especially yeah. with multiple monitors. Like I don't have, I don't have 27 inch monitors like you do, but uh, like uh, definitely not having enough like forward space. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, especially because this one has a lip. It's hard to see it in this picture, but it's got a lip that like folds oh, yeah. up for wires and stuff, Huh. Uh, which is doubly annoying because then the wires have to go through the center of the table and then to the hole, which is on the ends. Okay. But I guess if you were smarter, you would have put a, I would have put a surge protector in here mm -hmm. instead of trying to get everything out of the desk, which I only realized today. Okay. Um, but now that I have a desk, uh, I feel, I feel ready to get stuff done because I haven't yeah. uh, uh, gotten a whole lot. I think weird things last night was the first thing that I like really got done on that desk. Cool. Yeah. Having a, a good desk is so important. Yeah. Like that was the first furniture that I bought, I guess outside of a mattress. Uh and I was just it it makes a world of difference. Um I just recently bought um I bought so I bought a bookcase. Oh really? And it's almost exactly the same height as my desk. Mm hmm So what I'm gonna try to do is put it on the the opposite side of my desk. From okay. where from where I sit. The back side? Yeah, the back side. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, load it up with stuff on the bottom. I mean, it's already kind of heavy, but I, I want to really weigh it down. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will put a like an articulated uh, dual monitor arm on the top of it be okay. because there's not there's not really enough uh, of space on the edge of my desk on the back edge mm -hmm. for that to clamp on. Mm -hmm. So I'll clamp it onto the bookcase and then have oh, it kind of reach over the desk. Oh, interesting. And so that way I will have a hundred, like a hundred percent desk space open for whatever. Wow. Nice. Um, hopefully it works out. We'll find out in about a week. That's clever. And that's the kind of thing that Ikea furniture is made for, right? Like hacking, mm. 
hacking sure. hacking the IKEA. Oh, and I just got I just ordered uh with that order I ordered a, a big roll of, you know, those those Velcro strips. Um oh, for w- cabling. Yeah. yeah. Like I had a couple for my dad and I started to use those cuz the the way I have everything positioned like my the the back of my desk faces the like like I'm overlooking my apartment mm-hmm. from my desk, so mm-hmm. it's not like up against a wall like most people would have it. Right. Um, and I do that because there's which is there's, for chumps. Yeah. Uh, I like I want to I want I just paid this much for an apartment. <laughs> I want to see it. Yeah. Like you, all day. You can see mine is positioned like that too. Yeah. And the and, and the the big problem with that, of course, is that well now all your cables are are exposed to the world. Mm, um. So yeah. I st- I started using those the straps and like it it's amazing and mm. so I I just I, I went and bought a whole bunch of them so I'm super excited to to get that all worked out and then i'm also gonna i'm gonna go buy i'm gonna go buy this 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 drawer thing so that way i can i can have a place to put like all my cables mm-hmm. and then i'm gonna i'm gonna label them with my label maker oh man i'm so excited i'm i feel like i'm not surprised that you have a label maker i never considered yeah. you had a label maker well I, I said it i bought it like a month ago okay. and it's the best thing ever yeah. especially <laughs> Uh, if we buy you labels, will you let us borrow it so we can uh, <laughs> label everything at the new place? Or it, maybe sure, you yeah. even want to label. Maybe we can give you the task of labeling the new place. If <laughs> yeah, you want. maybe. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't. I just don't. I, I'm trying to gauge how much enjoyment you get. Like, if we do it for you, are we taking something from you? <laughs> but if we make you do it, are is that going to be painful? Right. I don't <laughs> know. It's something to consider. But we can definitely work something out with with getting stuff labeled. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's so great. Like especially with, I, I always had a problem with, you know, you, you you get everything plugged into your computer and then you you dig back there because you gotta like pull out some cable and like here is just it's it's an, an insane rat's nest fucking disaster of cables and everything and like you have to follow the cable to wherever it goes and you're like ah that's not the right one so uh, but it then is- you 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 label it at the source <laughs> yeah and then you know forever forever you know exactly what that is sure yeah no you're right forever forever what? forever what what year do you think it'll be when stuff is finally like wireless because right because i feel like it's been a be while nice. since you know remember when video game controllers first went wireless this mm-hmm. was like a while ago right and then yeah. you know like the wii was wireless and the 360 and the ps3 uh and it was like oh yeah there's going to be no wires in the future. And then, I mean, yeah, there's still wireless controllers, but, like, I mean, just looking around and seeing all the wires just even right here. Um, uh, well, I mean, with production stuff... Is it is it because there's so many things here that it's just, like, you don't want that interference? And, yeah, wireless stuff, like, can, can yeah, have interference. It gets tricky. Uh, and then you also have to deal with, like, batteries, and you just, like... It, it, it wouldn't like could at any point just be subject to like oh your your battery's low I'm shutting off because a lot of these things don't really have a good way to tell you uh like especially like keyboards and stuff they don't have like oh battery indicators or anything hmm. uh yeah and also there's there's probably some kind of like reliability still that's in cabling that you just don't get with wireless yet yeah um maybe someday maybe we would we'll have a minority report future <laughs> of just all hand yep. signals. Yep. I'm always just so it's like even not not even from a production standpoint, but even thinking about like the rest of video game consoles. So like one of the thing that sucks if you like video games is if you have more than one system. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like well now I'm out of HDMI ports or like yeah. now the back of my television is a mess. Which and so it, the solution that feels is like something like well, a splitter, which is like four more yeah. cables. Well, and the the TV is powered, right? So like for the battery issue, the console's powered, the TV's powered. Like mm-hmm. there should be some right communication there, but maybe it's just like the cost like of daisy it. chaining power. No, I mean not. I mean so like the HDMI cable. Yeah, like just having a wireless oh. signal of the video go through. Mm. Huh. But uh, right because. You want the console's already powered, the TV's already powered, so it's not like it's not like the keyboard where you have to put batteries in the keyboard. Uh huh. Right. Maybe maybe right. I'm, maybe I'm just 
talking dumb stuff, but so like uh, so like wireless video streaming. Yeah. Okay. Although n- now that brings me to like I try to wirelessly stream stuff to the Apple TV mm-hmm. and uh it just half the time it's it not just always looks great. like crap. Or yeah. it, it's just lagging. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, lag is a big thing even with the uh, Aircast or AirPlay stuff. Yeah. Um, Which is we it's for me, it only lags when I... Sorry, we're getting like totally off the topic now. But uh, I, like this to, show? I like to complain about the little things. Sure. Uh, for AirPlay, I've noticed streaming my desktop on the MacBook to the Apple TV. Mm-hmm. Super slow, unusable. iPad and iPhone, perfect. Mm. And so it's, it's weird. I don't know if it's mm. because there's the Retina display on the Mac and it needs to downscale and then... I don't know if that's the issue or what, but is it an older Mac? Uh, I mean, older. It was the first Retina MacBook Pro, so oh, so that's not that's not too old. Yeah, I yeah. don't know why. I mean, it might be at this point. But you know, with um, uh, Chromecasting, uh, there's a similar thing where like you can Chromecast a tab, uh, and it's like slower than like if oh, you were just doing from your phone. Interesting. Uh, even though Waffleopagus says the Chromecast has always been solid, but y- you know. Uh, with with the yeah from a laptop though it's kind of buggy. I don't know, guys. It has to pull the information out of the air. <laughs> yeah, that it works at all is astounding. I don't know. That's that's some magic stuff. Sure, Technology. that's 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 should the scams. That's what scam school. This week, we're going to show you how to wirelessly send video from one device <laughs> to another device. <laughs> You press the airplay button. Now it works. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> or it's like I'd an eight hour show. like slideshow presentation. The <laughs> air casting API is actually quite intricate. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good uh, stuff. Yeah. So what other topics have we got today? Uh, let's run through this one real quick. A sure. Slack date. Slack <laughs> update. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. This, this is, is like a great one. It's like a happy ending to a previous like. Yeah, Brant gave us <laughs> all a very happy ending. Uh, do you want to? That's my about? guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> so last it's on your business card. Yep. <laughs> last episode we talked about getting GCal integration into Slack. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, you created a, 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 a our scheduling room. Yeah, so uh, we got a hot tip from the chat. I was like, "Yo, use if this, then that." I mean, here's here's a here's a formula thing, and I was like, "Ah, oh, cool. Well, I'll go check it out." So I put I, I I set it up, and then I was like, "This is not gonna work." Basically, it would it would pull things from the calendar, and it would just tell you that something was happening. Like right when it minutes happened. before it happened or something. Yeah. So <laughs> we were just like, oh, I guess this is happening now. I I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's right. Because that was literally days, maybe even less than 24 hours after the last episode we did of this. We had mm-hmm. the the TAOM mm-hmm. thing. And you had set it up. And that's right. And where, it yeah. told... So I forget if it was I forget who it was, so, but it literally said to be at the place at a time that would be impossible to be there on time. Right. Like, yeah. It was like okay, so it, like while we were already there. Yeah. <laughs> the in magic versus mayhem. I think that's what it was, right? And it sent this message like oh, yeah, we were an hour there. before the show started or something. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, we were all just kind of standing around and not really. Yeah, and it was weird because the the if this then that formula it didn't have like any kind of it it, it was I, I wasn't able to like fine tune it in order to say oh you should post a reminder this far behind or whatever it was it was like pretty locked in yeah but then I did a little bit of digging around and I noticed well duh uh google calendar Ooh. has like native integration into slack so let's yeah. just set that up. Yeah. Uh, so now, anytime anybody updates stuff on one of our two calendars, it pushes to Slack, and then uh, every Monday digest. morning it does a weekly summary. Yeah, which is cool. real nice. Uh, yeah, that's that's it's a it's a lot nicer because uh, I think that's the function we need most is just knowing when stuff is on the calendar, mm-hmm. not necessarily being alerted to when it should start. Sure. Uh, so I, I appreciate. 
uh, the work you put into this. Yeah, it's yeah. been really solid. I there hasn't been a life saving moment yet, but it's nice to, it's there. There is that nice luxury of just knowing about it, and then mm-hmm. also it because it is going to do that every Monday. You have that kind of ritualistic, like oh, you know you. Like this morning, I was able to just review what's going on this week, and I was able to know if there was any big um, conflicts conflicts coming yeah. up. But yeah, I, I feel like it's it's a really important step t- towards increasing awareness, which we've notoriously had not a whole lot of. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the weekly summary is, I mean, I uh, that I'm okay if that were just for me because like I I I, I need that that structural like okay so I can I can plan accordingly all of this stuff is happening at these times and mm-hmm. I I just yeah. I I need that and especially that what's nice well. is one of these two calendars is Brian's like personal calendar yeah so when he gets something added we can see that that space is not something that we could block for something else. Mm-hmm. Um, and also we can tell when he's lying, when yeah. he's like, oh, so I'm too busy. It's uh, like, not on your calendar, you you're not. lying on the couch over there, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, or even things like, like uh, you know, I didn't really announce it, but w- uh, when I made, when we planned to do standups, like it created, it, it shouted out on this channel that we were shooting stand-ups the other day mm-hmm. uh, so if there was some some sort of thing where somebody said hey I need X Y or Z uh, you can be aware of it uh, well in advance because it's a sched- it it's when I put it on the calendar not when it comes up mm-hmm. so, yeah. I, I, I could tell that was you who made the stand-ups thing because there's a question mark yeah uh, hashtag I was like that's a Bryce thing well, yeah. Well, I, Bryce that, would have done that. That's supposed to be the idea with Brian's calendar. Is you put a question mark, and if he's into it, he should remove the question mark. <laughs> that's how it should work, Brand. Okay. Okay. That's how it should work. <laughs> it doesn't in practice. Yeah. Not yet. See, to me, that's 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 a that's a weird thing because to to me, if like in my mind, the calendar is sacrosanct. It's it's like the official thing but mm-hmm. ryan's calendar is very fluid i i presume uh mm-hmm. so it's amorphous and can shift and whatever but for me it's like it's like when when i write in uh, in 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 like a real fancy notebook or something i'm like i can't just i can't just your calendar's s- law i can't it's- yeah i can't just scribble on this like i have to <laughs> make it mean something and like um, mm-hmm. it's a, it's an official thing i have to make it nice and uh, the calendars, that sort of thing, where it's just, it's, it's weird to me that it could be a brainstorming tool. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, and part of it was that we had talked about it on the phone and he seemed mm. like that was an all right time, but then it would, then it actually needed to be changed because then weird things got changed. Gotcha. Um, so I, you know, I, I, if, if we had determined that that was a set in stone, there wouldn't have been a question mark. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I went into it with some assumption of, oh, Bryce probably put that up there. He's probably talking to Brian about something, and that's probably a thing that he'll shoot because nobody's talked to me, so I'll just let that exist yeah. as it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and if it was a thing that I needed you guys to cover or whatever, I would have said something. Yeah. But. Uh, and the rest of Slack's been going pretty good, too. Mm-hmm. Just... A general. In- Brian's getting increase. better about using the right rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Bonnie joined the other day. Yeah. To say hi. Yeah, she, she joined. So, so now no place is sacred. <laughs> right. Um, no. Uh, we, no, Bonnie. Now just everyone's sneakers joined oh, this no. morning. Oh, no. <laughs> he was like, "I peed on the product. Is that all right?" Uh, <laughs> he didn't. But he didn't pee on like a scam school product that someone. No, I well that was all made up. Okay, good. Sneakers I, did not join. Bryce, sneakers Bryce. did not join the Slack. Are you were okay? <laughs> Sorry. I just I'm didn't just want people you. thinking they're gonna get pissed on their scam school book too. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh no, that's <laughs> that's probably a good point. There's yes. no dog pee on your rogues wallet <laughs> yet. Yeah. yeah. Unless if you, you want extra, there to put it in the custom notes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can arrange that. Add twenty five dollars to your order and write a note. 25 sneakers is man sneakers ain't even worth that much but 
But shipping here and then shipping out. Okay. Yeah. Double well, shipping. And, and also and shipping liquids is kind of a kind of weird thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's chemicals. You got ammonias and stuff. Yeah. And also, you have to talk about rarity, right? Like how many orders are going out with that? Not a whole lot. Yeah. So sure. you got to bump up the prices uh-huh. to meet demand. And it also adds a new feature to the wallet, which is other dogs will then also want to pee mm. on it because now they want to claim that as their territory. Yeah. So added value. You're really getting like a hundred dogs worth of pee <laughs> by adding the one. Oh, you gotta you gotta put that on the product page. That's a saving. That's a bargain. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's what we probably gone far enough on that one. Yeah. User P day. Uh, what else have we got to talk about, Brand? Uh, we can we can dive into this 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 heftier topic. All right. Um. So there, there are kind of two topics here, and I feel like the, the first one will lead very succinctly into the next one. Um, and I feel like Bryce and I might have more to talk about the first one, and then the second one is kind of everybody. Uh, although, if you do have thoughts, John, by all means. So I feel like we are, we are very fortunate to have jobs where we can make things for a living, mm-hmm. right? For sure. Yeah. That's that's not a thing that everybody uh, can do, and for creatives, that's 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 a that's a tough thing to get to that point, um, because that's your that's sort of your ideal, right? Like if 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 you're like I'm I'm making I'm a making stuff, then you know you get paid to do it, and then everybody's happy. Yeah, uh, but there is a weird a, a a weird element to it, absolutely, like. I feel like I I was probably never more creative than I was when I worked at a shitty job, right? When I worked at like Best mm, Buy, yeah. Like I would just go home and make stuff just all the time, yeah. Right? Because you you have you have all these experiences that you're you're filtering through your art and you feel like you have something to say because you did all this stuff and just tactilely you're not being uh, yeah. uh, uh, satisfied in being able to edit video if you want yeah. to edit video and your job is not that. Yeah. Sure. Um, but then then you get a job as a creative professional mm-hmm. and it, you don't you don't make art when you feel inspired. You make art when you have a deadline. When somebody says, "Make art. Do 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 the art now. Do art. Do art. Do art." <laughs> Make yeah. that art, and so that that comes with with a, a weird a weird dynamic because you know like scam school is is an easy example, and I feel like it thrives best even though even though it has a formulaic structure for the most part, it thrives best when we are like hitting all cylinders on our creative elements. Yeah, right. When when we can when we can take what we have and f- form it into something new or interesting or a fun take, mm-hmm. uh, something like that. But you know, like we do this week in, week out. We don't always, are, we're not always able to like come up with the craziest stuff that we've ever thought of. Right. Um, and I don't know. Do you, do you, do you have any ideas I, on, on, on like this kind of weird, uh, uh, difficulty with uh, being a creative professional? Yeah, I mean, I definitely have felt that uh, there was one point a couple of months ago where I was like, uh, no, this was probably even longer than that, where I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into, I, I have like the formula of Scam School down. And so now mm-hmm. I'm like trying to work in fun little things that make the show like extra, like seasoning. Right. Um, uh, but there have definitely been weeks where it's like, there's, it's, it's, it's not. That's not exactly happening uh, as much as uh, I would find ideal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it it's tough because that does take away. You know, I haven't made music stuff in a while, yeah. uh, in in a very long time, uh, and. Uh, it, part of it is just like you know, I I, I spend X amount of time working on these uh, uh, inherently more important things, and then you know when I get some downtime, I probably don't I, I don't know that I want to keep flexing that muscle, uh, especially if uh, this is unrelated, but I you know not 
having the best experience, like having like a weird experience doing it lately. Hmm. Um, and, and I don't know what the solution is for that or, or um, uh, because part of it is like, you know, scam school, it's scam school week in and week out. And so it's, it, it, I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's a solution to making it fresh and exciting every week because mm -hmm. it legitimately isn't every week or so, um, many weeks where it's just like, this is a pretty straightforward episode. You know, it would be kind of a big thing to find something to latch on to and take it and run with it. And then, you know, you have to weigh the value of that versus just like keeping the episode that much shorter or simpler, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely, I feel like there's definitely, like, in keeping with Scam School, there's there's a sweet spot, right? Because you have, you definitely have that, that learning period of, like, I'm figuring out all the pieces of this puzzle, and I'm just, I'm just trying to keep it together and make it into, uh, like, you, you try to imitate what it has been before you try to innovate on it. Yeah. Um, and then once you, once you, once you've learned what that product is, then you can kind of... Uh, it, it, it comes a little bit easier to you, a little bit more automatic, and so you can you have extra resources to uh, try to make something different and interesting. Yeah. But then there's also you know the end of that cycle where it's like, okay, like uh, just just another week of this, yeah. you know, like keep going with this. And there there are some weeks where you know you have to really do some creative problem solving. There have been some episodes where. You know, I spend the whole week trying to figure out how to salvage this episode that I almost threw away because it was just a complete wreck. Mm. And then you finally crack the code and you figure it out and you go, "Okay, I, I've, I've, I've done something amazing here." And right. then, and the you, end result is like everybody's like, uh, "Oh, I, another episode, Great. yeah, awesome, yeah. thanks." <laughs> uh, and you're like, "You don't understand what I've just done here. This is yeah. astounding." Uh, and and it that's kind of like a weird reinforcement of just like you put in all this work just to make it where it should be to begin uh, to a baseline mm -hmm. uh, and and you know there there's n there's not any good outlet or any good reason to say well I actually had to go above and beyond because that's kind of like a weird thing to mm -hmm. need to say right uh, and also I think I think there's there's a, a weird of uh, fundamental underlying issue with. Like when when you're when you're making art for yourself, you're doing it because you were inspired to make a thing, mm -hmm. and then you like you 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 in in internally you thought of a message that you wanted to communicate to everybody, and you filtered it through your the voice of your art, and you said, "Here's a thing I want to say. Here's a here's a feeling or idea I want to communicate to everybody," and then you do it, and then you feel like satisfied that you were able to do that in your own interesting way mm -hmm. uh, but then when it comes to creative professionalism you you do it not because you're inspired but because you need to make a living and mm. it it like there's there's a weird uh, 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 baseline like reasoning that has changed and also a lot of these times like it's especially with scam school like it's not my message it's not my idea or feeling that i'm trying to communicate it's sure. brian's idea or whoever's idea uh and i'm i'm still filtering it through my voice in a few ways uh, but also there's a lot of ways that it's not my voice it's brian's voice from six years ago and it's it's yeah. all of these other different things and so it, it becomes a lot harder to make that You're a really satisfying over. endeavor sure yeah yeah um yeah it's it's it, it's it's a it's a tough thing and then uh, to go back uh, once you're done with all of that uh then it's like you have x amount of open time do you want to do do you want to try something new do you want to like like uh, to me there's kind of a thing of like like with my music stuff which is probably what i would consider my main like extra uh, like outside of scam school like creative endeavor uh which i've neglected uh i i always feel like i already have a, a hard time trying to come up with like 
a meaning for it, like trying to make it say something mm-hmm. interesting. Um, and so that's like compounded with like making, having made this other, trying to make this other thing mean something interesting. Um, and it's, and there's a little bit of just like, well, I don't want to burn myself out on the music stuff when there's another scam school or an ad or something, mm-hmm. you know, waiting for me. Yeah, and there's also there's also like I feel like there's there's a creative fuel that kind of regenerates and replenish, replenishes over time, mm. and uh, you know if you if you do something that's menial or whatever like a different job or you're not able to make stuff like that that just kind of accumulates, uh, yeah. and then you can just you just gotta let it out and you just gotta do something yeah um but then when you when you're doing stuff like scam school or uh, the go game videos that i'm doing or whatever Mm -hmm. uh like you're expending all of this fuel and you know sometimes some weeks you might have a small reserve left over that you can go do to make something but also like a lot of times it's just like creatively exhausting and it's it's like I I make my my most art when I'm like really discontent with a lot of things, hmm. and so like if if I'm if I'm if I'm doing if I, if I have a creative job I'm not going to be making a lot of personal art. Right. If I'm in a relationship I'm not going to be making a lot of personal art. Like there 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 are weird factors that kind of uh, uh, give and take with sure. with creativity, and I think that's that's a really weird issue it's sort of like it's sort of like writer's block but di- like completely but different, different because your day job is also writing yeah 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 it's it's like it's like you're writing all day yeah and you're like ah oh, i just want to go i just want to go write a, th- a thing but like i hate writing now yeah. <laughs> uh you know we have a lot of like flexibility in our workflows mm-hmm. do you feel like that um is an additional hindrance to this sort of problem where it's like, um, you know, uh, the work itself is, is kind of taking from that fuel tank, but it's on your own terms, how you want to handle it. And so that's sort of fulfilling like the need to make something your own. Like, I, I, I don't know that like the, the freedom that it, that comes with, doing those, these things um, is makes it just satisfying enough maybe uh, maybe uh, I'm I'm actually still kind of reeling from last year mm-hmm. um, where you were doing double duty every week yeah uh, and I feel like last year I burned out mm-hmm. and I burned out hard uh, and it was, it was really rough. And then, so like, I'm still, I'm still figuring out my schedule. I'm still figuring out like, when should I be doing things and what things, uh, am I tasked with doing? What, what things should I want to do? Like, I'm still figuring out like days that I have free time and days that I don't. And, mm. uh, it's, uh, you know, my, my, my brain is still scrambled in a lot of ways. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's the whole thing's weird yeah um but yeah i i think i think the 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 freedom of schedule helps ease things a bit um just because i can i know i can go okay i can i can have i can have an edit crunch uh uh, i can push scam score remakes back as far as sunday night which means i can usually probably have like friday and saturday free to just go work on this other extra stuff that I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it lets me appropriately like mentally uh, acclimate to some kind of environment that allows me to make more stuff that I might feel, mm-hmm. sorry, that I might find satisfaction in that scam school might not provide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's, it's, you know, it's not, it's not like a hundred percent solution totally solid locked in place but it's it's something that feels like sort of a makeshift like i can i can get by this week because i'm i'm doing this thing yeah um but and and i would say uh uh, as like 
an end cap from my perspective on this. Uh, I, I'm not discontent uh, or, or dissatisfied uh, in, in any means. Uh, it's just like, it, it's, it's a part of it. I mean, it's, it's, it's not something where I'm like, I need a change now, damn it. You know, uh, that's, that's my sound. That's when I'm angry. I get very, I get very that's your impression now. of me. Cause that's what I'm doing all the time. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it, but it's just, it, 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 it comes with the territory and I'm not, uh, uh, uh I, I feel okay. Uh, hmm. at least about where I, I don't know. Are, are you, is it, am I alone in that? Uh, you know, I have my weeks. Sure. There are times where I'm like, what am I even doing? Hmm. Um, and there are times where I'm like, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 yeah buddy. Like, like one week, uh, somebody I, I went to high school from, uh, sent me a message on Facebook. They're like, I just saw this video and you were in it. What? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's my day job. <laughs> and, uh, that was, that was that's a funny. fun little experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and or or like uh, another another Facebook moment. I I I left a comment on some guy that I barely even know from Dallas. Uh, he's another creative and he's really talented. And uh, I I left a comment on, on his thing uh, about internet speeds because he was talking about internet speeds and I was like, yeah, you know, like my boss has pretty good internet. So I, I put out a, a screenshot of a speed test from here oh, and. Uh, and just some random dude came in and he was like, yeah, man, Brian Brushwood is awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> this is insane. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember how we got here. That's funny. The, yeah. Um, but it was but, just a fun anecdote. Yeah. Uh, yeah but uh, you, you want to go into the, like the second fold of this topic? Yeah. Uh, and maybe we can talk to John, bring John in about this. Cause so talking about trying to be satisfied with your job, what do you guys <laughs> expect to get out of this job? Hmm. John? This is this is a weird question to me. I don't know. I saw this question and I was like, I'm this part of the discussion will be weird for me because I don't know, like I, I think I used to focus on that a lot more than I do now. Hmm. And I've kind of learned that I I uh I both work a lot better and I don't stress out a lot more when I just kind of, you know, don't have as much expectations for what I'm looking to get out of it more than just like kind of enjoying what it brings, uh, kind of at the time. And w- which is always kind of changing too. Um, especially as, uh, my role has changed several times from, you know, mm-hmm. scam stuff starting, starting that kind of thing too. So, um, and it's always been cool because it kind of brings a, uh, it brings, a, you know, unique, every time the job kind of changes a little bit, like it stretches me in a different way that I wasn't stretched before, mm-hmm. which uh, ends up, you know, I wasn't thinking before we ran scam stuff, darn, I really wish I knew how to run an online store and how great would, <laughs> you know, how much of a good experience would that be for, you know, a future work or something like that. Mm. But now that, you know, I've been doing that for a while, it becomes this thing where it's like, well, you know, if there was a instance that I did for whatever reason need to look into something else, that's a huge thing that, you know, I, I didn't even know that I would enjoy doing that type of work. Hmm. Uh, and so it's kind of a, it, it kind of ended up being a fun thing when I stopped. Cause I used, I used to focus on that a lot. Uh, yeah. and I think it, that hurt me in some ways. Um, but I don't know. I, I think I think I have a very different because you guys, even the last conversation, you know, your your career is definitely more focused on uh, your creative talents and uh, not to say that I don't have creative talents, but I think the creative talents I have are, or at least the creative talents of myself that I enjoy are different than like I think you guys hone in on a more specific skill hmm. set that I'm that I am not really you know pursuing that in myself i uh it's a different so, type of creative yeah it's a, it's a different type of thing where yeah. where yeah you guys definitely have a more specific skill set that you're kind of becoming an expert at mm. whereas uh i'm just like 
great. You have I'll different buyers for that. Online stores, <laughs> sure. And uh, yeah, because your 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 role, you're exposed to a, a large diversity of of skills that you develop over time, and and new interesting things all the time. And uh, so it sounds like that's that's kind of more or less kind of what what sort of like you're really getting out of out of this on some level sure yeah but again it's like maybe and maybe i should be more worried and thinking about that more often but i and again i used to but it's less of a it's been less of a concern for me recently and i i don't really i can't really pinpoint why it has but i i don't know if it had to do with like um because uh like getting married last year and and that and like part of it too is you know kelsey has a very specific career she's focused on uh, and so I don't know if that's like kind of now that there's two of us, like there's like a, oh, well you have your career thing. And then wait, I, I don't know. It, it's uh I'm young and naive and I don't understand all the things. Just living yet, in the but, moment, but, John. Yeah, right, living yeah, in the moment. In the moment. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't have a good answer for that. Okay. But, uh, but I feel did like you, we all learned a lot from your answer. Hopefully, yeah. I don't yeah. know. What, did you like when you first took the gig? Um, to w- 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 the first thing you were doing was being Brian's assistant initially. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you have like? Did you have a thought of like what that could evolve into? In sure, X yeah, of yeah. Years? So, well, that's what's interesting, right? And that's where I think I kind of st- probably part of the reason I stopped worrying about it was I saw that change so many times in myself that I was like, well. I'm not consistent. Like I'm not a reliable source for what I want to do in the future. So why <laughs> should I listen to myself on it? You know. Oh, interesting. Because I think uh, at the time, well, even going into co- this is going back way too far, but going into college, I really wanted to do media production stuff. Actually, probably close to what you guys are doing with editing. I really liked doing that in high school, and then I got to college, and I realized that I actually really hate it when I'm, you know. Uh, almost kind of similar to what you guys were talking about where it was like, well, as soon as it wasn't my creative outlet and it was like a, oh, it's for the class and you have to do the thing and you also have to use the ideas of six other people and mm-hmm. yeah. they you were required to do it this way. And it was like all the fun got sucked out of it for me. Mm. Um, but then, you know, it wasn't like that went away and killed it forever. Like then I find something else and it, uh, you know, to do creatively and, uh, that kind of thing. So, so from the get-go, I guess I've always been inconsistent with like my actual like <laughs> end goal. But uh, uh, yeah, then I got really interested in uh, like internet TV stuff, and so that's why I kind of pursued the gig with Brian. Mm. Um, and yeah, I thought like that would be a good stepping stone for doing more things like that. But then I realized more that like. Um, you know, working on kind of the smaller scale, I I liked, and it was also good because, you know, working closely with Brian, you know, I could kind of change, or like as my responsibilities changed, it kind of gave that new life to the job mm. every so often too, uh, which I actually I I really like that too. So so I guess maybe part of the part of the goal is like not getting too stuck and bored of the same thing, and kind of growing in that way because i guess that's part of my personality that uh like because there's some people i know that are like look i want to be a you know like uh i have a lot of friends through um uh online friends who love like pixar movies and so a lot of them are all artists and trying and they don't all want to work out like pixar or like even in 3d animation Mm -hmm. but like one of them is like well i love doing lighting for this thing or whatever and like she just really wants to concentrate on lighting someone else likes 2d animation it's like from the get-go it's like they focus on that uh thing and they like take it to the next level on that track whereas Mm -hmm. i think i've always been like uh this is kind of a fun endeavor and Hmm. you know a year goes by and it's like well that was fun this portion of it is kind of fun and i'll focus on that but And again, I don't. Maybe that's a terrible. Maybe that's terrible advice for people. But well, it's interesting. uh, Like definitely, when I got out of college, I was feeling really. uh, I I was feeling worried because the way my production major went, it's uh, it's kind of pick your own emphasis. And so I was doing you know video stuff, and I was doing a lot of audio stuff, 
but you know i wouldn't really like too focused on either one in particular you know um and it wasn't like I, I felt worried that I hadn't specialized in something. Um, uh, and so when it came time to like put together a resume or just kind of decide w- how I was trying to sell myself, uh, it was hard because you, it feels weird to try to sell yourself as an everyman uh, because a lot of people don't want that. Or, you know, you go, it, 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 it gives the idea that maybe you're not as honed in a specific skill someone is looking for, mm-hmm. uh, compared, you know, if you're like, if you're like, like, like your Pixar friend who like, uh, is really into the, like, it sounded like 3d lighting. Like yeah. that, that's a really important gig. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, when you deal with like major production houses, like, there are certainly people who just do that. Yeah, um, you need someone trained in that specific thing. In yeah. fact, someone I know here in Austin uh, worked for a, um, uh, I forget what company he was working at, but uh, Apple moved a lot of stuff over to Austin. And the thing that he was so specifically like geeked out and invested in, mm-hmm. uh, apparently Apple needed someone that was good at this and that- was asking around. And they're like, oh, you should ask Francesco because he's literally the only person like you'll ever meet that is yeah. good at that and then so he just got hired by apple and i was talking to him and he, and he was talking about how uh it was so f- it's just so funny to him because he is not someone who goes and pursues the next part of his career so he's never like you know left a job to like go to the next thing or like been thinking about what to do next but yeah um it's just so funny that, you know, a company like Apple would just, like, go and, like, offer him a job that he didn't he need to look for. But And it was because he's so specifically um, – he's, he's just an expert at that particular thing. And right. so there's there's definitely a huge value in in uh, going that route. Um, but then when, like, you do – like, we're a small business. Uh, when, when you're with a smaller crew like this, you kind of need to wear a lot of hats – yeah. Um, which is kind of something that it seems like we all can handle pretty well, right? Is kind of doing things uh, that are needed, uh, whether it's like last minute photo editing or, or uh, you know, <laughs> a midnight web- website redesign or something like. Or the time I had to run scam stuff because John was gone. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was a rough time, but we got through it. <laughs> well, uh, and, uh, I knew when I, uh, one thing that I I did know when I was kind of in college was that I really liked working in a very small organizations uh, and small groups. Uh, And, and so uh, that was, I guess more of a serendipitous sort of uh, aligning of like uh, wants and needs. Um, I don't know. Brent, you've been here a a little longer than I have. What is it that you are kind of, hoping to get when all is said and done or wh- where do you want to be what is what does brant hughes of 2030 look like right well <laughs> i'm not gonna answer that last bit because i don't know i don't sure. know nobody knows um but it's uh, you know what i wanted out of the job has changed a bit over time when i when i first got the job i i i got it in part because i knew i would be doing the touring stuff and i knew that as somebody who's agoraphobic and uh, you know anxious and, and stressed out about everything and hates people and all all of this stuff i knew that i would like develop and grow as a person and get some character by being forced into those uncomfortable situations uh so that that played a part in it but also and i th- i think i probably talked about this on like our first episode uh, when when Brian called me up as sort of like an interview style thing, uh, he asked me like basically what did I want, um, and I told him like I wanna I wanna make something that inspires people. Hmm. Um, like I, I figured out kind of early on like that like w- w- the feeling that I get when I watch Whiplash. Like, yes. I, I want I want people to feel that with yeah. something that I made because that that's like the best feeling when like you just want to go out and do stuff and make stuff and you feel like good about everything and 
Like th that's the best thing for me. Hmm. Um, and that's changed a little bit because I feel like through scam school, scam school has probably inspired people. I feel like there are kids out there who have been inspired by scam school. Like kids who care about magic and kids who care about that kind of stuff. Like they very almost certainly exist. Yeah. Pr I'm turns out scam school's popular. I'm pretty sure they exist. <laughs> I haven't met one yet. Sure. But I'm pretty sure they exist. And I feel like on some level, like that's that's cool. But I think these days I kind of want to make something that I feel like I would be inspired by had I seen it. Charles you know? Rubach said in the chat that Scam School made him an alcoholic criminal. Uh, do you feel responsibility for this? I pin all responsibility on our resident alcoholic. <laughs> Brian. Okay. Brian Brushy. Yes. Uh, part of me was like, is he taking a jab at me? Because I <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, yeah, but it, yeah, it you know it's just it's I I feel like there's there's even though I kind of attained s some part of what I was looking to do, I feel like it's it's hard for me to sort of relate to that mm. that achievement at this point. Uh, so I I want to I want to make stuff that I would love and feel inspired by and that's like I don't know how I'm gonna get there yeah. or whether scam school can offer that maybe it can maybe it can't who knows well that's that's the thing with all these uh, like aspirations like that right like like if you go up to I don't know some if you go up to the director of Whiplash and you ask him like you know without telling him oh you made me feel this thing and you you know. I, he would probably tell you the same thing where it's like, I just want to make people feel like this and I feel like my current movie doesn't do it, So, but my next movie will. And so it's like, you know, always that next level thing where it's like, you know, you'll always be working on the improving what your abilities and, and that sort of thing. So yeah, that, I think that's probably where some of it comes up where it's like, well, you know, you should always be striving for the next level, but to prevent going insane, you should probably also be okay <laughs> with, uh, you know. Sure. I mean, the the, I, I, the the second that you feel like you can improve is the second that you you become like that's the end of your career. Um, as as a creative, you should always feel like you make garbage, so that way you can always improve, so that way you can always just be a, a better better artist. Mm. Um, and so I've. I'm sure I will probably always have that element of things, but there's also there's 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 that specific point of, uh, I do, I like, I I feel like right now I'm I'm making stuff that can do that for some people, but I just don't know if it's like if it's the right kind of people, if it's the right kind of inspiration, if it's yeah. if if it's like like I I want something that I can. Like uh, that's I mean, your own, yeah. Sort sort of like I could, like I said, like something that I would feel inspired by. I there's all there's also like going back to like I I want I want my messages to be filtered through my voice as well, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's part of the struggle. But yeah. do you have an idea of what you think that looks like? Is it uh is it fiction narrative, nonfiction documentary? No, I mean it's it's funny like whenever. Uh, a, th a thing that a lot of people ask creatives, like uh, on some of the some of the film riot Mondays and stuff, people ask Ryan, like, "What would you be doing if you weren't doing YouTube videos?" Mm -hmm. And like for me, that answer is a billion different things. Like, <laughs> I had a brief stint in working on you know designing typography. I had a brief stint in writing. I had a lot of time in photography, in poetry, in painting, in video shooting video editing like like yeah. all creative th music like fucking all of it right. i love doing all of it um and so there's it's it's hard for me to nail down exactly what would get me to where i would like to be i see okay but i think there are a lot of routes to get there cool well uh, uh i i hope that you can get there. I, I, I don't know why I'm saying this like uh, like you're leaving us. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. um, for for myself, um, 
man, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, I do love the, uh, all of the things that like, like it, it just happens to be that like all of this we're doing is all of the stuff I really do enjoy, uh, you know, video production and editing, uh, doing some photography stuff, doing a little bit of web stuff, uh, like handling social media stuff, doing podcast things. Um, and, uh, I guess if I had a guess of just like where I would end up down the road, it would be doing more things like this, handling a a more production stuff, being some sort of producer, uh, uh, doing, you know, I really love doing the, the live switching for all the podcasts and stuff. Um, uh, and, uh, I, I think that's something I'm probably going to end up doing more as I've moved closer. Um, but I, 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 I don't know. I feel weird. Cause like hmm. hearing you talk about, you know, really, really wanting to get your message out in your voice. Uh, it, I don't know. It, it, I, I definitely think it's, it's, um, this is not a disagreement at all. He hates your opinion. <laughs> that's what he's, that's what he's really thinking. Um, like, I feel like I don't have that message for myself. Hmm. Right. Uh, and uh, like, I, I see myself more as like a support class. Like I want to help other people's messages. So it's, it's, it's maybe not as, um, as, as like off base, it's, it's not like a, 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 the disparity between here and there is not as large for me. I feel like, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, going, I, I mentioned this when we were talking about, uh, creative stuff where like, I feel like I don't have that drive in my music right now. Uh, which is why a lot of that stuff is slow. But then like when I was doing the album, it was a very clear thing that I wanted to express. Um, and so maybe I'm just not at that stage yet. Uh, but I, uh, I, I really like doing what we're doing and, and some form of that is, is what I would like. I don't know. I, I, mm, I feel like this is not a great answer for this. Is that, <laughs> Am I, uh. So you mean to tell me the guy who came up with the topic is the only one who feels satisfied with his answer? <laughs> <laughs> I feel satisfied with my answer. I, okay. I just don't think it's... Uh, I don't like the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see Whoa. how it is. Oh. <laughs> but I would have liked the question a few years ago, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Waffle Opagus asks, uh, where does my music fall into that? Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but you're the only one out of the that has released his own album. But I also feel like I'm maybe the only one that wanted to release an album. I don't know. Uh, I like, released one track of a song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brant's got music up somewhere. Is it even up online somewhere? I know you've made stuff. Uh, yeah, I got some music up on my YouTube stuff. That's right. I, I actually do have like an album style project that I, I want to work on. I've wanted to work on it for the past year. I just I haven't been able to get around to it. Yeah. I also composed a chorale in 12th grade. Chorale? Nice. But that's it's only written on sheet music somewhere. Yeah. Ooh. I think they call it chorale. It's like when uh, I took music theory in a High school it was awesome. Yeah, great class, and they had us write. Um, they call them chorales, but uh, uh, it's like the same thing it, in like older uh, traditional hymns. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you got all the lines and stuff, and it kind of moves all. So when hmm. the congregation's singing, they all sing uh, together. Well, it's not too complex. Sure. So uh, it was similar like that, but we learned basically different chord progressions and what you could do in that realm. And it was really cool. And, uh, uh, yeah, they, uh, sorry, this go. No, no, no. I didn't know the tangent would last this long. My mouth just keeps running, uh, as I remember more. But there was like, a, I forget the progression. I want to say it was like a 
uh, major sixth to a minor third was like a progression that you could do. But our teacher was like, well, most people don't do that. And then I was like, well, mine's going to have that three times. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so uh, I like built it around to make sure I could incorporate that and have it sound good. Anyway, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, not not the level that, that uh, you are creating your albums at. Uh, yeah, and like both times at the uh, you know both times that I've put out an album, it was like for a very specific purpose. You know, uh, uh, the first one was actually like my uh, senior year um, project uh, in in college, and then Mercury Counter was like uh, I I I just really had this I- this really strong idea that I wanted to do, and and. Um, so I, I I don't know I, I I think that's a kind of a weird comparison. Yeah. Any anyway, just the, the the I I spent a lot of time thinking about you know why we do what we do, yeah. and uh, and what matters and what has meaning, what's significant in life, in work, in whatever. So mm-hmm. I was uh I was just kind of interested to hear what you guys thought. Interesting. A corral, a musical composition consisting of or resembling a harmonized version of a simple stately hymn tune. Oh, interesting. Mm. So, I was right. It is a corral. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, we're we're getting close to about an hour 30, so we got time for probably one more topic. we got yeah, a couple. Let's just wrap it up real quick. Okay. I, I think all of these are, are super quick, just like more or less mentions. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, let's uh, start from the bottom and then get here. Okay. Uh, uh, we did a stream on Wednesday night. No. Yes, Wednesday night. Uh, yeah, because you were doing scam school. Yes, that's correct. Um, uh, because night attack was supposed to be on Wednesday, and then it got pushed back to Thursday. And I kind of felt partly just like you know, we when we have a delay with night attack, we have to make this big push on social media so that people know it. Uh, and having to do it twice, you get people who just like won't get the message and then we'll show up and get disappointed. So I wanted to do an idea that I had been thinking about for a little while about just going back and watching pre-show videos from old docs that like the guys just never got around to. Um, and, and so, uh, Bonnie and, and Brant ended up joining and, uh, that was not attack, uh, which, uh, I think I had a really good time with, uh, Brant. That's not exactly, it didn't seem like that's exactly your cup of tea. Not particularly. I mean, when, whenever I did the technical switching and stuff, like that was that was like the, the part that I mostly just kind of pushed off to the side. Yeah. Um, Pre-show videos. Yeah, because you know sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. Right. Um, and to me, it just feels like a lot of filler sometimes, hmm. uh, unless like you really get on a roll of like really good ones. Sure. Um, but yeah, it was fine. Yeah. Uh, and Bonnie seemed to have a good good time uh, watching watching and talking a little bit more about the videos because sometimes Brian does it, he'll either kill it if it's too long or just kind of yeah. scud on to the next thing. He's yeah. in a very specific state of mind and it has to like fit into what he's looking for. Yeah, he, he it's like his rhythm. It's very much his rhythm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I, I think it would be cool to do more of that. Uh, I know I've talked with like Sergeant Muffin. He's interested in doing, figuring out a system. We're going to have a system for that. I don't know. Uh, but that's not attack. That's on the BBpedia videos yep. YouTube channel. Available on demand, except in Germany, because <laughs> yeah, um, of your music. <laughs> it was only one song actually, hmm. um, and it was. I want to say it was like, oh, it was. I think it was X gonna give it to you. Uh, oh yeah. Because yeah. uh, I was playing the uncensored version, which I think trips a different content ID thing compared to the censored YouTube version. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Germany always box, right? But a bunch of stuff. Um, here's another topic. Uh, so I also, hold on. Oh, sure. You should be able to count your Mario maker level as a type of creative outlet too, though, right? Or does that that not count because Nintendo did a certain portion of the work? That feels like creative light. Like you're definitely making a thing, (laughs) but it's also like, you're not. You're not like going and and mixing colors and like the, right. there there are, there, are, there are like strict rules. I was gonna say it's like but, Minecraft but creative the, mode, but then yeah. Minecraft creative mode has a very logic. Like people are making graphing calculators and shit in right, Minecraft, yeah. where uh, Mario Maker is kind of a. I mean, See, I, I, I would agree say on some level. What I really actually like about Mario Maker is the rules are are there are those rules in place. Mm-hmm. If you go too far, it doesn't feel like a Mario level, which in some outlier cases is awesome, mm-hmm. but it's like to make a good Mario level, you have to kind of know 
yeah. the realm that you're in. And I actually think there's kind of a cool um, – there's a kind of cool creativity with working in those limitations to make something that's either that you haven't seen bef- – people haven't seen before in a Mario level or that is just, you know, really Enjoyable. Mario level. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, or even the the stuff that you know the limitations of what's there to make it all self working, mm-hmm. like the level that did you show that off on the normal show or the uh, pre show? Uh, that was in the pre show. I, I made a, an auto play. I didn't mean to get us back on the topic that we skipped. Yeah, um, though I will or say that, not that we skipped that we already covered. Uh, though it kind of makes having a little bit of a creative outlet like that easy. Mm-hmm. It's kind of easy yeah. just for me to turn the thing on and well, just especially like, when if you're doing something creative all day anyway, right? And then. It, that gives you, you know, it, 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 uh, you know, you're not needing to, uh, man, bad analogies are just, I'm like preventing no, myself not, no, from going through a lot okay. of bad analogies. With the understanding that it's a what, bad analogy. The, uh, uh, you know, you're not like crushing berries to make your own paint. Like it's, mm. it's all kind of there for it's you. Self-contained. It sure. gives you a cool atmosphere. And I, I would say it gives you, it actually puts a lot of that creative atmosphere it kind of puts you in the right mindset for it you know you kind of got the music going and you uh mm-hmm. it does a lot to make it so you um and it does kind of feel like cheating at a certain point but i do think that the stuff like that is uh especially if you find yourself in a busy week of uh you know creative like real life work right mm-hmm. like it's kind of relaxing to have something that's a creative outlet that yeah that you feel like you accomplished something, mm-hmm. but also, you know, you didn't slave away for a week on it Trying only to, to realize it. that you didn't yeah. want to finish doing it or something, you know? Yeah. Like, like when before. you whiff on a Super Mario Maker level, like it's not as harsh as if like your code and shit doesn't work, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, to, yeah. Me, to me, that stuff is, is it's very much uh, candy. Like, like it tastes Brent's good. Like, you guys are elementary schoolers in the creative <laughs> department. <laughs> It, it, I'm going to work on my masterpiece. It, Sorry. It, it's, it's fine. Uh, you know, it tastes good. You get a little bit of a sugar boost. Like, you're, you're feeling good, and you're like, oh, I want more. Like, let's keep going. Uh, but it's not a meal. Like, it's 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 not, like, super filling. It's uh, But it's it's fun. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I, I, I want, Do you feel that way about Rocket League? Brands never yeah. had okay. candy for dinner. It's what... Uh, <laughs> you don't know me well enough, John. <laughs> um, uh, well, since, since since we touched on it, uh, is there a Rocket League update? I uh, just I'm still playing. You're playing uh, a lot of it. Stream yeah. a lot of it. Yes, yesterday, yesterday a guy a guy uh, the first time this happened mm-hmm. a guy a guy was like, wait, you mean to tell me you're only in bronze? Because I was playing so good, um, that dude was like, "You were playing this dude's game in the system. Um, like, how is he playing with all these low level people?" Yeah, I felt real good about it. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm streaming a lot. Over Wait, at- so where is that now? Okay, help me understand this okay. because I'm having trouble on my own Rocket League understanding. So I usually play like the casual, like I don't know what they call it, but it's like the first set of options mm-hmm. where you can get just kind of jump in and play i usually do no no it's not that it's like play online but then you go it's just like a regular playlist yeah i guess it's not ranked yeah playlist i guess Mm -hmm. yeah so but then now they like started season one Mm -hmm. or whatever but i don't understand how that all fits in is that only ranked play and am i too late to join it because i tried to join it a couple nights ago Mm -hmm. and i couldn't tell if the menu was just frozen or if I missed something. I can't join. No, you can you can totally jump in whenever. Uh, so they're they're breaking up seasons uh, by like I want to say f- three or four months or something, and then they'll start up another season uh, where they kind of like reset your rankings. So yeah. you, you just jump in and you'll start at like a base ranking, and then you yeah. know if you lose, you lose some ranking points. If you win, you climb up the ladder, uh, and there are certain tiers uh, that everybody's kind of divided into. Uh, but you could kind of just do that whenever, um, and then. And so you rated a bronze on that particular the season mode. Uh, so uh, you get rated on on each playlist basically. So one v one, two v two, three v three, and they're two different types. Gotcha. Three v three. But I'm I'm basically bronze level one in all of them. Bronze level two and two v two. Mm, but your game. Your game is so on point that the guy is like, I'm like, Man. I'm like Silver Three. Mm-hmm. Like now, what if you became the back. best? If you became the best Rocket League player, 
like if you won like a already Rocket am League John if you won, already am if you won a Rocket League tournament would that would that satisfy some of your creative longings or would no that, but it would it would feel good it would be just it's yeah. a different kind of goods yeah it's candy yeah uh, uh, yeah yeah uh, so uh, uh, this uh, so Ash mentioned that uh, they're doing a Rocket League tournament on Wednesday night yeah at a uh, oh. fantastic arcade uh, oh wait like. Here in Austin, yeah. yes, uh, but well, like, R L I R L. You should go and do that. Uh, but I was like, thinking about you it. Should yeah. Go and do it. Uh, but you know, Wednesdays are tough for us because we have scam schools, and I already know I'm already like behind on this. Do the scam finish school. your episode early, which I might actually be able to do because I've I, I I locked in like a super easy uh, ad. So oh, yeah, uh, that that should be wrapped up by tomorrow. Dude, if you <laughs> compete, I'll like come and cheer for you. All right. Like, yeah, oh, Brian. Yeah. Oh man. Hell yeah. Hell okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and it's at nine o'clock, so uh, I usually yeah. have skims well at least done by eight. So <laughs> I usually uh, have it done by like nine thirty, <laughs> and then I'm like, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. So so uh, we'll try to do that. Let's try to do that. Yeah. Um, uh, Maybe we'll periscope it or something. Hmm. How good do you think that people are going to that? Like, oh, like, actually, it is being broadcast over Twitch. So, oh, well, yeah, then watch it on Twitch. Like, is it, I? I never understand this with certain games. Like, mm. if you, um, like, do you feel with your current skill level in Rocket League, if you went to that, you would stand a pretty good chance of going far? Mm. Or is it the type of thing where because the internet competition is so spread out over the whole internet that like. You just feel it's gonna like it's going to be MLG you're... players there. No, I was saying there. like like uh, people wouldn't come. I, I, I guess that's a, a second part of the question. Are people oh. coming specifically to this to compete in that? Or is it big enough of a, like, is there a big prize or something? It is its own event on Fantastic Arcade. But is there like, like, do you get money at the end? Or? Uh, maybe? I think there might be like some light prizes or something. Um, but I, I think I think it's 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 not like it's not like a big draw where people are going to come in from yeah, out yeah. of town to yeah. uh, compete in it or anything. I mean, maybe it's uh, Rocket League's big guy, a, comma guy. It's it's pretty much just going to be local people. <laughs> which which in that case, right? You would feel like you st- would stand, stand a, better a better chance, chance yeah. Um, because there will probably be s- some good players, some people who who play a decent amount. Um, you know, Austin seems like a place where people would play Rocket League. Uh, they but, say there will yeah. be prizes, but they don't say what the prize is, so it'll probably be little matches. Yeah. How do you... Be like, here's an Alamo Draft sign House gift up. card. Do you have to be a part of you, Fantastic? Uh, no I think badge. you just show up. It's free. Yeah, it's, it says on here, oh, yeah. it's no badge required, very free. Uh, like, all the... I think all the arcade stuff is is usually free at these things. And is this, is this like, in a theater, do they do it? Or? Yeah, this will be in theater number nine. Uh, they just like shut down or what? They're whatever theater that. And are they do? Is it split screen or is it? It's a good question. That's I'm asking question. too many questions now. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm more curious about like what kind of controllers do they have? I think I think you. Oh, it says come grab a controller. It might. I wonder if it'll be like PS4 or if it'll be a PC thing. I don't know. I I play with like a really old like wired 360 controller. Oh uh, okay. I, yeah. They, that might throw off your whole game. Might, yeah, it very well could be. Uh, and, and then the last little topic. Uh, 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 so, uh, I, I I mentioned uh, very briefly that I moved uh, here in Austin, and I'm like a third of the distance that I was uh, before to Brian's house. Uh, and so you'll see me here a lot more to do like night attack and weird things and stuff. Um, uh, but one of the the things that was planned for after the move is that I'll be doing behind the scam uh regularly kind of the way brant does scam school remix every week um and that hasn't like there was never like any gavel bang that's just like in here it, it, here's your license to do behind the scam every week it just happened that i ended up doing it a second week in a row uh this week now you do it forever <laughs> Uh, which is fine by me. Uh, you know, it was just a distance thing. Like I couldn't. I think we have a really fun one this week. I think. Oh yeah. We almost had none, and then I think it's a fun one instead. So, we'll talk to you about it. Later. Okay. Cool. Um, oh man, does this mean my last one was the Scan School Academy 
episode. <laughs> uh, oh, do you want to oh, do you want another take? Oh, you do your last. You can go out on the, uh, <laughs> the upcoming one. Maybe. I think you would. I think whoever does it, there's a lot of opportunity to have some some good fun with it. Interesting. Mm. Watch it. Watch me come back next month. Like you fucking lied to me. You. <laughs> I don't think unless we're not doing the one that uh, Brian and I just decided a few hours ago to bump up the release on one. Uh, so. I mean, that's four days away. Well, the, it, so, but you, so you understand is, it can be totally. Uh, well, that's like three. Oh, you're saying it's a ve- it, that's like something in a normal company being like three years away. Like it could change, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't like, think. I don't think it's changing. Okay. Uh, like, is it? Is that a weird thing? I don't know. I, I I don't know what this discussion is, other than just like saying that it is. A, yeah, I don't know. I like being mysterious uh, about it. I, I'm just trying to get one of you. I'm trying to make it sound really good, and one of you will commit to it. And I'm like, ha, 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 they gotta gotcha. do that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I really like the style of behind the scam, mm-hmm. um, and so that's been fun to like develop over time. And you definitely have like made it its own aesthetic. Yeah, compared to like the chalkboard thing that it used oh. to be brother oh <laughs> i I, like I was the... upset from day one because <laughs> it, it was like old assets that had already been generated for a behind the scam property which mm. was what they were calling scam school live right um there were like two episodes of behind the scam which were really scam school live which was really bb uh, like which was brian BB and Justin show, talking of. about yeah um and so Brian was like, well, we already have these assets, so we use these. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was just like, <laughs> we, mm. for the record, we did have, um, we had a lower thirds uh, that for behind the scam yeah. that nobody has ever seen because I refuse to <laughs> use them. <laughs> Is that the magnifying glass thing? Uh, yeah, there was like a magnifying was glass like and like stained paper yeah. and stuff. Well, now we should develop shows based on the assets that are created. So we'll have like a spy show. <laughs> and- <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's been fun. And, uh, you know, behind the scam has always been a fun departure from scam school and scam school remix. Like, you can you can have like this weird interlude in the middle where we show a fun montage of Brian shooting fire out of his wrist. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, structurally, I think it's the loosest show that we have, which yeah. is fun to play with. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of I'll, I'll be sad to see that go, but uh, uh, out of out of out of my hands, but. I'm sure it'll probably be nice to free up a little spare time every other week. Yeah, I mean, because uh, uh, it definitely like uh, ever since I kind of have been 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 doing part of part of the stuff. Um, I like I, I haven't been blind to the imbalance of like how the 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 video stuff kind of is is between us where like. We both are pretty even on Scam School, but yeah, you're doing Remix every week, and then we were doing Behind the Scam every other week, split off, and like... There I, were definitely like weeks where I'm like, ah, this is relaxed, and then the next week I'm like, oh, every single day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, hopefully, like, it's just one less thing to be off your plate, so that it's... Mm-hmm. you the, the, that the, it, it is a little more even in the things that we're doing, and it's not hindering your ability to spend time on other things right um so uh, yeah yeah hopefully it all works out and is fun and stuff like that yeah fingers crossed um all right well that will do it for your september 2015 edition of the bizarre briefing uh uh, where is everybody john um star wars we're still Two, couple three months, months away. Out. Yeah, I mean, you can also you can start following me on Twitter, and then when I go back to it, then yeah. you can be there. I yeah. I I think it would be really fun uh, if when you finally went to go see Star Wars, that you saw it twice, 
Uh, and on the second time, because the first time you should watch it just normally, right? Sure, sure. But the second time, that's when you debut the new ad, John Tilton. And it's you live <laughs> tweeting your reactions to the Star Wars movie. Uh, I'm pretty sure you get kicked out of the draft house. No, but that's what I'm saying. You don't that. go to a draft house. You just go to like a Cineplex or some shit. Wait, there's other theaters in Austin besides a draft I know, house? No, I live next to one. And I'm like, how are you still in business? <laughs> but uh, yeah, there are. And Do you give them like, your business? I mean, I've only been here like a week. All right, all right. But I might. I won't judge you if you do. I, I I'll no, think it's actually it. funny. Like they're the, cheaper with the draft house. It's a. It is kind of. I I do really like it. I also there's certain movies that don't feel right. Like Star Wars will be fine, but mm-hmm. I remember seeing um, Tree of Life. Is it the? Uh, yeah, I think that's the title of it. Uh-huh. Uh, it came out a few years ago, um, and I remember seeing it at the draft house, and it was like that movie's so quiet during sections, and then it's just like. You can like hear a pin drop during the movie normally, and then you've got like people eating, like with mm. forks and knives and like yeah. cut stuff up. I mean, it was just like it really messed it up. Mm. But uh, overall, if it's like a loud action movie, you don't really notice that stuff. Mm, I see. Um, but uh, so that's at John Tilton on Twitter. And if you have an issue with scams with a scam stuff product or want to send a thank you note or whatever, scam stuff store at gmail dot com. Scam stuff store at gmail dot com. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brant. Uh, Where are you at? Where are your head at? Uh, Twitter. Twitter is a good place. Uh, Twitter.com. Join it. Yep. Go to Twitter. It's like uh, <laughs> there, was, there was a moment I was I was going through a Scam School remix, mm-hmm. and the, they showed a video on this old Scam School video, and they wanted to accredit it, right? Of course. Like, you're yeah. using footage that's not yours. You should say where it's from. Yeah. Lower third pops up. It says YouTube.com. Oh, that's right. They credit it to YouTube.com. So it's like, great, I'll go to YouTube.com, and there it is. I'm sure it'll be right on the front page. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I thought that was really funny. Twitter.com slash Gatwag. G-A-T-O-W-A-G. You can probably find me elsewhere, but... What about your Twitch? Because you're streaming a lot of Rocket right, League right, right now. Right. It's Rocket uh, League or uh, Rocket Rocket League.net slash... Yep. Uh, no, Twitch.tv slash Gatwag. Yep, that's the place. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Brad Cas B R Y C A S. Uh, you can find this show if you go to uh, neshcom dot com slash tbb. That'll get you the links to RSS and to subscribe. Uh, put it in your iTunes. Uh, I think we're on Stitcher. Maybe we might be on Stitcher. Uh, I'm and gonna say yes. Yeah, sure. Absolutely, uh, we are. <laughs> uh, looking at the calendar, our next episode is going to be October 26th. If there aren't any delays or whatever uh uh but we we do this every month uh the last monday of the month <laughs> October. i'm gonna be so stressed out during that thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for so look forward I'm to that stressed That's out just thinking about the that radio day. tease for next Woo. month it's uh, my cousin's uh, birthday though so oh cool what's do we need to move it for for like oh no, well he's out of state oh. i won't be so fuck him it's just, it's, then just fuck a, him. it's just a good uh it's just a good date in my mind yeah. um and we will see you guys next time Bye. Bye. Later. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>